All right, so AP calculus, uh, AB, volumes of revolution. This is the, another disk method. We're going to uh, rotate uh, this semicircle about the x axis, and we're going to use that disk method. And I'm going to. I like this example because I'm going to show you at the end of this example. Um, it's going to connect with something that you already know about, and uh, anyways, I think it's going to be pretty neat. So. <clears throat> First of all, the equation for a circle um, around the about the x-axis here, about the origin, is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the equation to make a full circle like this around the origin. So if we isolate for y, okay, if we isolate for y, we're going to get y squared equals um, r squared minus x squared. And we're going to get y equals plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now, we uh, want to get rid of this negative version because we don't care about this part underneath, right? We're not really caring about that. So that's what the negative part is. So we'll just change that to uh, positive. So we'll get rid of the signs here. So that's what it looks like. Um, that's what this equation is, okay? Y equals root R squared minus X squared. I'm going to keep R in there because what I want to do is I want to uh, find out what the formula for the volume of uh, the revolution of this semicircle. We're going to revolve it around the X axis, okay? So what, uh, what sort of shape is that going to make if we revolve this around the X axis, guys? It's going to make a what? Uh, well, it's going to make a, it looks circular, but what's the actual, yeah, it's actually a sphere, right? Kind of tough to draw a three-dimensional there, but yes, it's, it should make a, a sphere. So we're going to test, we're going to see, use this disk method to find out what the uh, volume of a sphere is, okay? Of what the sphere with radius r would be. Okay, so, let me just clean this up a little bit. If we uh, are talking about the disk method, we need to use the radius... Okay, and we need to also find uh, an equation for what would be one of the disks, right? I'll just give up there. So here is here's one of the disks, right? Here's another disk, another disk, and so on. So we're looking for all of these disks put together because we are literally taking this and revolving it around, right? Going all the way around, right? So... <clears throat> What is, what is R? Well, um, R is the function, Y, right? And so the radius here uh, of this circle is Y, okay? So we have, we want to take the integral, and it's going to be from uh, negative R, so that's actually a negative R there, to positive R, See that? These aren't numbers. We're going to leave these as just um, uh, variables here, the, the radius r. And we want to take the uh, volume of the circle. So that would be pi times r squared. Now, when you take this as r and you square it, what do you get? You take a square root of something, you square it, you get, you get, get just what's inside. Okay. So again, we're doing pi r squared, and so square root of r squared minus x squared squared is just r squared minus x squared. Are you with me? Okay. Uh, and then, of course, dx, right? So that's our integral that we're setting up. And I did I erase this for what r? Okay. So this is the integral that we're setting up. Is everyone clear on that? Here's our circle. The r is just simply the function, it's y, which is this. So pi times r squared dx, okay? Taken from negative r to r. So let's evaluate this. Now, do you remember how to evaluate this? Um, if we evaluate this, we need to take the antiderivative, right? And then we need to evaluate it at the upper kind of bound here is minus the, uh, the lower boundary, right? So um, let's expand this out first. 
So this is going to be simpler for us. So from negative r to r, this is going to be pi r squared uh, minus pi x squared, okay, dx. And if we integrate that, so what do we get here when we integrate pi r uh, squared? r is kind of our, our variable. Uh, or no, pi r, sorry, pi and r are both numbers. So this is just a constant squared, right? So this is a constant. Pi is a constant, r is a constant. Here's our variable x over here. So if we integrate, if we just have a number, like let's say it's 5, what's the, int uh, the antiderivative of 5? It is what? 5x. So this is going to be pi r squared x. And pi x squared, so now we have the variable. So we're going to take the antiderivative of this. So we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide it by that same number. So what are we going to have? We're going to have uh, 1 third pi x cubed. Does that make sense? All right. And we're going to evaluate that from negative r to r. Oops. Oh no. Okay, so let's let's move up. Let's move up here now. So I can just kind of keep this on the same relatively the same screen here. So if we evaluate that at r, what do we get? We get um, pi r squared times r minus one third pi. Uh, that's r cubed. Minus, all right, so we're always subtracting. Remember the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. If we want to evaluate this integral, definite integral, you evaluate it at the bounds and take the difference there. So minus is going to be pi r squared times negative r minus one third pi times negative r cubed. All right. All right, so assuming I haven't written anything incorrectly here, let's try and simplify this now. So I've got pi r cubed minus one third pi r cubed. This uh, negative here and this negative, we're gonna cancel each other out, so it's gonna be plus pi r squared times r is r cubed. And this negative and this negative are going to make a positive, but this is going to be another negative yet. So what's that? <laughs> it's going to be minus one third pi uh, r cubed. And I guess that was that was not good math of me to just do that, but I knew this was going to be cubed. That's going to be a negative. Okay. Okay. So this is what we end up with this right here. Now if we combine all this, if we put this all together, I, let's just see, let's hope I'm doing this right here. I don't have this written down here at a time, I just thought this example was so cool. So um, what do we have? 1 pi r cubed plus another 1 pi r cubed, okay? That's 2 pi r cubed, so 2 pi r cubed, and then we're subtracting 1 third pi r cubed and another 1 third pi r cubed, which is what? Uh, minus two thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so similar terms. What's two minus two thirds? That's going to be one and one third pi r cubed, which actually is in an improper fraction form four thirds pi r cubed. So that is the formula for the volume of a sphere. The formula for the volume of the sphere. And isn't that what you were told in math 10? Right here? 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now, you guys are not as excited as I was um, when I saw this example. But is this exciting? That calculus makes sense? Oh, my goodness. You guys need a shot in the arm. What do you guys think you are? Too cool for calculus fun? Okay. So, look at We just proved. We just proved through calculus that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. 
Yes, there should be dancing in the streets, really. Um, this, but basically, it's a proof for the volume of a sphere. Four-thirds pi r cubed. And any radius you want, plug it in there. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay, nice try.